Hi there, Matt Wade here, and today we're going to talk about the right way to present a PowerPoint slide deck during a Microsoft Teams meeting. This is an update to an earlier video I did on the topic and a necessary one, since Microsoft has really improved the PowerPoint experience in Teams. So let's jump in. PowerPoint is likely one of the most popular sharing experiences during Teams meetings. There's a reason when you bring up the share option, PowerPoint has such a prominent position. People present slides all the time. PowerPoint and Teams meetings, to be frank, used to suck. But starting about a year after the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, Microsoft's PowerPoint engineering team rolled out an upgraded sharing experience that really changed the game. They branded it as PowerPoint Live. Not sure why they needed a brand, but they did give it one. The point is that the experience is a lot of power now. It's basically PowerPoint's presenter view built into Teams, and there are a lot of good reasons to use it. Back in my earlier video, I had said I rarely had a situation where the built-in PowerPoint sharing features met my needs. Uh, that's no longer true. So let's get to the point of how to harness this power the right way. First, any participant in your meeting could theoretically share slides as long as they join from the team's desktop, browser, or mobile app and have an M365 account. Dial-in joiners, it should be obvious, cannot share slides. They're audio-only participants. That means even someone not in your organization could share slides. I'm pretty sure the thing that matters is that they have a OneDrive associated with an M365 business or enterprise account. I tested with an Outlook.com account, and even though those accounts get a OneDrive, I was only able to share my screen with that account. OneDrive is necessary because when you share the slides, you're actually uploading the slides to OneDrive, and Teams is then sharing the slides from that central spot. Now, of course, it works this way if your IT team has it set that way. Then it comes down to the second factor, your role in the meeting. Meeting organizers, co-organizers, and presenters can share content in a Teams meeting, and that includes PowerPoint slides. Attendees cannot. Meeting roles are a really important aspect of your meeting settings, and you can find an article in the video description on how to manage roles. Especially for meetings, the fewer presenters there are, the better. That way, nobody mistakenly shares their content or embarrasses themselves in some other way. So that's it. That's, that basically means anyone in your meeting with an M365 account can share slides if they have a file to share and the correct role. Once it's time to share your slides, you have two options. First, you can click the share button in the meeting and select your slides by browsing for the right file. Or you can click the reasonably new and very handy present in Teams button in PowerPoint itself. Either option starts PowerPoint Live. If you use the share button in the meeting, it shows a list of the most recent PPTX files that you've opened or edited in OneDrive, Teams, or SharePoint. You can also do this from the mobile app. It's very handy. If your file names are long on desktop, you can hover your cursor over the name to see a tooltip with the full name. You will not see files that aren't in the cloud. If the PPTX is on your desktop, in a flash drive, or somewhere not in M365, don't expect to see it. Click the Browse button to find any slide deck and present it. Also, if you aren't using the OneDrive app to sync files from SharePoint and Teams, this is a good reason to do so. I have a video on syncing your cloud files to Windows for easier access via File Explorer. Once you select the slide deck in the meeting or you press the Present in Teams button in PowerPoint itself, your slides will upload and share with all participants. It may take a moment for the slides to load. The slides display to anyone no matter when they join the meeting, as long as you're still presenting. This does not make the slides editable to other people. You are presenting, not collaborating. At this point, you should see PowerPoint Live, which shows the current slide on the left with a red outline, a line of slide thumbnails along the bottom, a space for slide notes on the right, and some buttons and features. Everyone else just sees the slide that you're presenting, nothing else. If you only see one slide, it's probably because your window is small. Click the ellipsis, then click Show Presenter View. A quick heads up that you can't share slides and start on a specific slide. You'll always start on the first non-hidden slide. If you want to get to a later slide, use the thumbnail strip to jump to the slide you want. Though if you are recently presenting a slide deck and close it, then reshare. PowerPoint Live will ask if you want to resume on the last slide. Now, let me be clear about something here. Do not share your screen or window to show slides in a meeting. There are a few good reasons, but two are most important. Bandwidth and easy access to chat for the presenter. 
Screen sharing uses a ton of bandwidth and could impact the quality of any video and audio feeds, especially for people on unreliable internet connections. Don't ruin the meeting quality for the sake of screen sharing you don't even have to do. The other reason is the meeting chat, or the people list, it's up to you, can be opened next to the slides, which you can't do if you're sharing your screen. The lack of access to the chat is super annoying, so do yourself a favor. The takeaway is if, when sharing a PowerPoint file, your muscle memory is to share your screen, start changing your tune now. Now that you know how to share, you need to know about a very useful feature called presenter mode. When you share slides, and this applies to sharing your screen or an app window too, by the way, uh, there's an option to display your video in a way that's connected to the content. At the time this video was published, there was only one option for PowerPoint Live. It's called Standout. This takes your video and places it on top of your slides. If you're sharing a window or app, there are two other options as well. They just happen to not be available in PowerPoint Live, at least not yet. You can set presenter mode before you share your slides, but it's easiest to click the Standout button from the Meeting toolbar after your slides are shared. You'll see yourself in the bottom right corner of your slides. Anyone else using the Teams desktop or mobile app will see you too. Anyone joining from a browser will not see this. They'll continue to see just slides and your normal video will be a cutout of you on a black background. If you have participants joining from the web version of Teams, give them a heads up that it may look a little weird, at least until Microsoft gets the modern meeting ex experience into the web app. And if you have a kitty behind you joining you like that, say hi. I will give Microsoft credit that this has become pretty good, but it's still not amazingly configurable. You can't yet change the size of your video or the layout or anything, though that is supposed to be coming. I still like using my side-by-side -side video trick uh, that I've covered in another video if you want to uh, have a little bit more layout configurability. That also brings up the concept of slide design. If you plan to use standout presenter mode, you need to start designing your slides to include a blank space for your video. I'll cover more on that in a future video, which I'll link here once it's available. If your video is covering important content on the slide, you can toggle presenter mode on and off. Now, to clarify presenter mode with two other things. If you've heard of the recent Cameo feature in PowerPoint, which lets you place your live video feed into a slide deck, this is different from that, and this is specific to Teams. There are plenty of videos on YouTube that cover Cameo. Also, presenter mode in Teams isn't presenter view in PowerPoint. The latter is the term people have used for the view of the slides, notes, and uh, marking implements in PowerPoint for many years. Presenter mode is a Teams feature that lets you place your video on top of or next to shared content. Presenter view is a PowerPoint feature that shows slide notes, upcoming slides, and whatnot. Once you're in PowerPoint Live, you've got a bunch of features available. So let's talk about what other people in the meeting can do with your slides. First, they can't see the presenter view that you do. They only see the large slide that you see outlined in red. Second, any presenter can take control of a slideshow. That is a great feature and a terrible feature. It's great because any other presenter in the meeting can take control of the slides at any time, which means nobody should ever again, and I mean ever, have to say next slide in a meeting. However, if you don't set up roles in your meeting, which I mentioned earlier, anyone can steal the slide control from you, which can be embarrassing if they shouldn't have or didn't mean to. So I'll say it again, make sure your roles are right, especially for large meetings and webinars. Third, by default, Attendees and presenters can move ahead or backward on your slides privately without affecting what the rest of the meeting participants see. If they do go ahead or behind, uh, there's an obvious red button to jump back to the slide the presenter is on. Very useful. But maybe you don't want them to be able to do that. Your slides tell a story and you don't want them to, uh, to be jumping ahead. So just click the eye icon to disable that feature. You can toggle this control as much as you want uh, while the slides are being shared, so take advantage when you need to. So now that you're prepared to give a Jobsian level keynote, you want to use the features available. First, slide notes. They are on the right side. The area is blank if there are no notes. Unfortunately, you can't add notes live during the presentation. In fact, you can't edit the slides either. If you want to update notes or slide content, you have to change the file in the PowerPoint window, stop sharing the slides, and then reshare them. Second, you can jump to any slide at any time by clicking the slide in the thumbnail strip, which you can also scroll through. That includes hidden slides. Click the go to slide button or press the G key, which gives you more slides to choose from, but basic forward and backward buttons will likely suffice for most situations. 
If you move forward and there's a hidden slide, PowerPoint Live will skip it. Third, there are markup tools that you can use to write on the slides, just like if you were presenting from PowerPoint itself on a separate screen. You should test these out before your session so you're familiar with what they do and how they work. You may even want to uh, join the meeting from another device using the Teams join link to make sure uh, what you do on your end displays the way you expect on theirs. Fourth, if you don't use presenter mode or there are multiple people speaking to these slides, you wanna spotlight them in Teams. Spotlight makes sure that these videos uh, always stay on the screen with the slides. Any presenter can spotlight someone, either click the ellipsis on their face in the meeting or if they're not displaying, find their name in the people list, click the ellipsis, then click spotlight. If anyone is joining the meeting in the browser, Spotlight won't work for them as of the time of this recording. Just give everyone a heads up that if they're using the browser version of Teams, they will have to click the slides after you spotlight someone to bring the slides back up. All right, so at this point, you are more informed and prepared than most Teams users when it comes to presenting quality slides in a professional way. And once you try it out a couple times, it's pretty easy to run high quality presentations in Teams. Now, if you like the Teams content I share on YouTube, you'll also love my book, Teach Yourself Visually Microsoft Teams, with 250 individual tasks consisting of 70,000 words, 300 plus screenshots, and over 100 individual tips, many of which show exactly how to run your meetings. You'll become the expert in your organization on using Teams chat, channels, meetings, and files. I'm especially proud of the quality and quantity of content we have on meetings and Teams. Most Teams books breeze over meetings because it's so hard to get good screenshots and test all the features, but this book really dives in. Click the link in the video description to find out more. So what do you think? How do you present slides during Teams meetings? What tips do you have when you are presenting? Share them in a comment below so others can learn more of the tips and hacks for better meetings in Teams. And if you like this video, a thumbs up and subscribe is much appreciated. Thanks so much for watching and happy presenting your PowerPoint slides in Microsoft Teams meetings.